the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So I was thinking about it, and I realized that five years ago this Sunday was my first Sunday here at St. James. It was the first Sunday of February. Um, it was also Super Bowl Sunday. I think I remember it being Chris Giglio's birthday on that particular day. Um, and as I found out the very next day, it was supposed to be Scout Sunday, but they got bumped for the new priest's arrival, and I've been groveling to him ever since. <laughs> but I'm sure you all remember what I preached about that day, so I, this is all just in a repetition for you all, but I'll tell you a story that I told on that day, uh, and it sounds more ridiculous as I think about it. Um, Laura Lee was that summer, it was when we were in Vermont, so she was still four years old, uh, but for some reason I thought it was a great idea to take Laura Lee and Elliot hiking, and uh, no other adults were available or maybe interested at that particular day, and we went to a rather challenging uh, hike uh, in Vermont, uh, in the Green Mountains, and I'm sure I was uh, adequately prepared with several sources of water, a first aid kit, uh, food and other rations in case we were stranded on the mountain, uh, maybe just a little bit of water. Uh, but I began uh, the, the hike, uh, we began the hike, and everything was going okay. We had a little bit of complaints, but you know, we, were, we were doing really, really well. And we got almost all the way to the top of the mountain. Uh, you could see the top, uh, but the beautiful sunny skies, it started to turn gray. Uh, it was getting incredibly windy, and it was a hike where uh, the last 10% uh, was sort of above the alpine line. Uh, uh, so it was um, almost a totally, it was very rocky. Uh, and it was really narrow, uh, the place where we were, were supposed to hike, and uh, Laura Lee probably had the best judgment of all of us, and she said, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, because I've been spending the other 90% of the way up the mountain uh, cheerleading and, and talking about what a conquest it would be for us to get to the very top of the mountain, uh, wasn't done. Uh, and so I have one adult and two children who want to go in totally opposite directions. Uh, so we had to have a family meeting right there. Uh, family meetings usually go better when uh, mom's around. Um, <laughs> so I tried my best, and I tried to sort of tell Elliot, well, you know, we can see the top. It's not a bad time to go back around. But after all that encouraging, there was no way I was going to stop that train uh, from getting to the top of the mountain. Um, and Laura Lee uh, said the only way she was going up any further was if she was carried. Uh, but looking at that narrow uh, uh, trail uh, and the wind, I didn't feel comfortable uh, carrying her uh, up the rest of the mountain, so I knew I had to encourage her to go, and so we had this conversation, um, very philosophical conversation uh, about what we choose in life in general. You know, do we choose easy or do we choose adventure? Uh, somehow it might have been the light air up there, but she uh, she agreed with adventure, and so uh, we made it the other ten percent, and uh, and then we came back down uh, the, the the mountain, uh, and I was very very proud. Uh, once I told that story five years ago, you should have known that you called someone with, with rather suspect judgment. Uh, but we continued to live together. But I did challenge us, uh, I challenged myself, and I challenged all of us um, to choose adventure. Uh, when given the opportunity to choose easy or to choose adventure, that we would choose adventure. And as I think back on the last five years, I think of the places where we did choose adventure and uh, the places of uh, considerable pride. I also sort of acknowledge there were moments where we probably took the easier path and uh, whether that was wise or not, you know, but we do that kind of reflection. Uh, did we always choose the way that, 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 that God was pulling us to go or was it sometimes easier to, uh, to veer around? And, uh, and I am uh, tremendously proud of, proud of the decisions we've made over the last five years. And, uh, but I think it's a good litmus test for us to look back, but it's also a great litmus test for us to evaluate where we're heading in the next five years, next ten years, uh, and beyond that. Uh, are we choosing um, uh, comfort? Are we choosing security? Are we choosing uh, our own way? Or are we listening to God and following God in that great adventure that God leads us on? Um, and with that lens, uh, I invite you to uh, enter into a little Bible study with me. Because uh, I think that this gospel uh, has so many nuggets and so many different directions uh, that we could go in. Uh, so instead of choosing one like a good preacher would, I'm going to take you on all of them uh, with the bishop right here watching. Um, you know, uh, but I do think that there's a, a really uh, great opportunity for us to reflect on who we are as a faith community, whose we are on, as, as a faith community. And I think this reading is, is rich with, uh, uh, with material. So first, 
Uh, we are in the season of Epiphany, and uh, Mark lays out that whole first chapter to tell us, uh, one, who God is, what God's ministry is, how people responded to that ministry, and what we're called to do. And remember, we talked about how uh, Mark almost sets his whole gospel up uh, as a preparation for baptism. Uh, this is our sacred story. Are you in or are you out? And so we start with his baptism. Uh, we get to the call of the disciples, and everybody is encountering this person uh, who is Jesus for the first time. Uh, and there's also this sense of, uh, of incredible excite excitement, but Jesus trying to quell that excitement. Uh, that there's a bigger picture to be played out uh, that, that this hysteria uh, undercuts. And we call it the messianic secret, that there's, um, uh, the, uh, the demons especially know exactly who this is. This isn't just another prophet. This isn't just a, a healer. Uh, this is the son of God. Uh, and, and, and Jesus is still trying to keep that under wraps. But uh, Jesus is incredibly popular. Uh, very quickly, right out of the gates, as soon as he starts doing uh, uh, preaching in the synagogue, and people say, you know what, this, this makes sense, this, this has integrity, this holds, I trust this. Uh, and, and then he goes and he's healing, um, he's even healing on the Sabbath, uh, which, which, which cuts through uh, to the heart of God. Uh, and he goes out, and he uh, uh, goes out from the synagogue, and he goes uh, to the house of Simon and Andrew. And the next line uh, gives us a clue about who the disciples are. I don't know about you, but I sort of uh, pictured the disciples as sort of, you know, whether it's 18-year-olds deciding to enlist or uh, uh, college grads deciding to go uh, in the AmeriCorps or Peace Corps for a few years before going on to grad school, uh, that it were people uh, that were unattached that they could walk away from whatever uh, commitments they had uh, and follow Jesus at that time in their life where, um, uh, where they're just free. But we get a, a clue in this, uh, in this passage that they aren't, that they've got incredible commitments, that, um, that they had to make difficult choices to follow Jesus. Uh, we get the first mother-in-law in the gospel. Uh, uh, Simon's uh, mother-in-law was, uh, was sick in bed, uh, and so we uh, start to realize, okay, if you have a mother-in-law, you probably have a spouse. That's how that happens. Um, and uh, if you have a spouse, maybe you have children. And maybe your decision to follow Jesus uh, came at a, an incredible cost. Uh, I've told you before that uh, uh, about the uh, Saturday Night Live uh, commercials they used to have, there were the Deep Thoughts by John Handy. Do you remember those? But one of them uh, suggested that it was always a great idea to carry around two bags. Uh, and someone inquired, why is it a good idea to carry around two bags? And they said, well, because that way, if anybody asks you to lend a hand, you would say, absolutely, I would love to, but I have these two bags. Uh, you know, and sometimes we fill our hands with anything that we can to keep us uh, from making those kind of decisions to drop everything and follow. Uh, and uh, our family, as much as uh, it is one of the greatest missions of our lives, it's one of those things that sometimes we hold in our hands so that we can say no um, and still feel good and puff out our chest, uh, but realize that there was an incredible cost. So as we think about what kind of adventure God leads us on, realize what kind of adventure those first yeses uh, came with, uh, what kind of cost those first yeses came with. So we're inside uh, Simon and Andrew's house, um, and this is sort of what seems incredibly insensitive, the way that this all plays out, uh, except for the Jesus part. Uh, but so they go up, and uh, 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 Simon's mother-in-law is sick in bed, uh, so Jesus goes there, and uh, it's so tender the way, uh, the way he heals. It involves human touch, uh, and it's, uh, uh, I think, what, what, what God does for each of us, uh, if only we could feel it as palpably, takes her hand and lifts her up and takes her up. Um, and, and cures her of her fever. And then she starts serving them, uh, you know, which sort of seems uh, uh, abrupt. Uh, but think about what we do here. Think about the whole way uh, that this service uh, builds up to that climactic moment where we receive Christ's grace, uh, Christ's miracle done on our behalf, uh, where we uh, uh, receive Christ's healing poured out in his body and his blood, uh, and then we're immediately sent out to serve. It's the same trajectory of, of the mother-in-law uh, whose uh, hand Jesus takes, who lifts, uh, who is lifted up, and then begins to serve. It's what we're called to do as Christians and as the body of Christ. We're called to realize the, the healing salve uh, of, of, of Christ's body and Christ's blood, the miracle done on our behalf, 
and we're called to go out and serve, full of gratitude uh, and a sense of service and duty. All right, so, so we have that. So Jesus has healed uh, 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 Simon's mother-in-law, uh, and uh, the, the word around town is spreading, and people are gathered, the entire town is gathered right outside uh, the doors, and he walks out, uh, and he heals, uh, and, um, and sometimes uh, we do struggle with that, Jesus' miracles. Uh, there's a, an, an arbitrary sense to it that uh, if you were alive at a particular time in a particular place uh, in history, uh, and, uh, uh, then, then, then Jesus uh, takes you by the hand and heals you. Uh, well, we have loved ones that, uh, that, seem, to go, uh, that, that seem to go unhealed. Um, and I think that uh, Jesus acknowledges that too, and that Jesus realizes that his ministry is much larger than healing all of the people in his local village. That would be wonderful. His reputation would be over the moon. Uh, he would be a, a, a rock star in this one small community, in this one small pocket of time, in this one small uh, place in the world. Uh, but Jesus came for something much larger than that. And, uh, but there's something tantalizing about that. Uh, and Jesus realizes as he's healing, uh, as he's being affirmed, uh, as, as there's joy and excitement in the work that he's doing, uh, that it's seductive. And so what Jesus does every time uh, there is a temptation not to follow uh, the journey, uh, the adventure that God has set in front of him, he goes and he prays. That's what God guides us to do here, as this is our touchstone, where we come and we gather and we pray, uh, and we ask God uh, to give us the strength and the wisdom to know where that adventure is leading. And so Jesus uh, leaves at, at, at a dark time in the morning uh, to go and pray because he realizes there's more to be done. This isn't about this particular time in history. Uh, this is bigger than that. And so while he's praying, it says that the people hunt for him, uh, not just uh, the, the folks that find him, uh, but all of those folks that are incredibly hungry uh, for, for Jesus' word and for Jesus' healing, they hunt for him. Uh, and when they find him, uh, I think they're a little taken back. They love what's going on. Uh, they're the, they're, the, they're the, 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 by association, the heroes in their own town. Uh, this following Jesus is pretty good stuff. Uh, you know, everybody loves us. Uh, we're, we're the right-hand man, men of, of, of Jesus, and he's curing all the people in our community. But Jesus says it's bigger than that, and it's going to take some cost. And the adventure is going to take us uh, places that we're not prepared to go yet. And so uh, in the dark of night, um, and they leave people unhealed uh, because uh, it's about more than the physical healing. And they begin their journey, and they go and they start preaching and teaching uh, and, and carrying that word out into the world. Um, and so as we peel those layers of this story, I encourage us, as we think about the, 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 the trajectory that God has cast for us, uh, where are we choosing adventure? Where are we choosing the difficult path that God might have for us uh, that's met with incredible joy and richness uh, but does start with cost? And where are we choosing easy or convenience or security? Where do we like to stay closer to home because uh, it feels safe? And where are we using that pattern that Jesus set for us? That we come to this table, we break bread, uh, we receive God's grace and God's healing, and then we uh, go out into the world and we share that. Where are we praying for guidance? That when it does seem a little bit too convenient, a little too easy, uh, that God might challenge us. That God might invite us uh, to sail that ship a little farther out to sea uh, so that we might see new, broader horizons. Where is it? that we gather together as the body, uh, and we hunt for Jesus. We ask, where is Jesus to be found in our community, beyond these doors? Where is Jesus hungry, or hurting, or in need? As we plot the next five years, I foresee tremendous adventures ahead of us, but they won't always be easy, and they do require us to take a deep breath put our hands together, and bend our hearts towards the difficult but rich work of hunting for Jesus. Amen.